So we're going to talk about um, Muir Woods near San Francisco and then take a look at uh, Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. I've got quite a bit to go through. I hope there's a little time at the end to chat, but at 40 minutes I turn into a pumpkin and everybody goes away. So uh, the trip I took was a few years ago. We flew out to San Francisco, did, messed around, did some San Francisco stuff, visited Muir Woods, then rented a car, drove to Yosemite, visited there for a while, then drove down to Yosemite, and then we drove back to Sacramento and uh, turned the car in and went home. So that's kind of what our itinerary was. So the first place we went, uh, well, we did a lot of stuff in San Francisco, but what I want to talk about is Muir Woods. Um, this is San Francisco, San Francisco Bay, and the uh, Bay Bridge. And so Muir Woods is uh, about 17 miles north of San Francisco, right up in this area here. Um, we took a tour bus there because it was just easier. And uh, so they picked us up at the hotel and, and uh, drove us out to Muir Woods and back. So this is kind of a look at what Muir Woods is like. They say there's about six miles of walking trails. And we walked up as far as Bridge Four and back. We didn't do six miles. So must be either talking about the Ocean View Trail and some of those that we didn't go on. Um, and there's Redwoods border each side of uh, Redwood Creek that runs down through the center of it. Really a beautiful place and a great place to see redwood trees. This was founded as a national monument, as you see, in 1908, about 550, 560 acres, and contains these old growth redwood trees, which are one form of a sequoia. There's like three forms of sequoia. There's the big sequoias we'll look at later, there's redwoods, and then there's ti some tiny sequoias left in, the, uh, in uh, China. First, this was a, a privately owned uh, area and then it was preserved under the Antiquities Act. Uh, John Muir and William Kent were instrumental in doing that. Um, there's a picture of John Muir and, and uh, William Kent. There's Muir on a fallen tree. Um, in the old days, they had what was known as a gravity car that went from the mountain down into Muir Woods, and it just ran downhill with a driver in the front right about here pulling on the brakes once in a while to keep it going slow, and then they'd drag it back up with, uh, with um, a steam engine. Uh, and here's where they dedicated one of the trees there in, in, uh, in Muir Woods. I want to say that um, I want to talk more about John Muir maybe later, but um, uh, he and uh, William Kent was um, uh, although he did much to preserve this area, uh, he was a uh, pretty racist gent, uh, supported the Anti-Asian Immigration Act, um, uh, didn't, want, uh, uh, didn't want any more uh, African Americans uh, in, the, in the United States, and, um, and, and, uh, and supported uh, damming up Hetch Hetchy, which we'll take a look at later, and damming up that valley. So, he and Muir kind of parted ways as far as a friendship was concerned later on. So there's only a few places native redwoods grow along the coast there in the Northwest. These trees are pretty old, um, pretty tall, and probably about half the diameter of sequoia trees, but still pretty big. You don't see many trees with a 15 foot diameter. Um, this arrow here will show you about where these pictures were taken. We parked down here and then you can just walk up these trails, cut across the creek, walk up this way and so forth. So it's just a kind of a walk, very peaceful walk through these trails as you'll see. This was uh, up at the far end, the terminus of the um, gravity train. And there, uh, there was a originally a, an inn that was built there, a Muir Inn. That's all been removed. Most buildings have been removed so that these trees can grow more naturally. So 
So this is a nice, uh, a nice uh, outing from San Francisco. Beautiful area. And if you can't get to uh, see Sequoias anywhere else, this is a good place to go. One more photo of the Muir, Muir Woods. Very beautiful. Uh, from there, we rented a car and drove to Yosemite. Uh, we'll talk a little more in detail about the Yosemite Valley, but I want to give you kind of a picture of, of, um, of uh, Yosemite. The main tourist areas here in Yosemite Valley, this is the Merced River that roll, rolls through here. You can see there's El Capitan and Falls, Half Dome, Glacier Point, all the things maybe you're used to seeing. This is where the lodge is, and there's a couple different campgrounds there. Up to the northeast is to all to all the meadows, which is a high country, about I think it's about six, eight thousand feet. Very pretty up there. We'll take a look at that. And the drive up there is really nice. There's a couple of sequoia groves that were closed when we were there. In fact, they've been closed for years uh, as they um, as they redid the area, took out all the buildings, all the infrastructure down there, because these trees like to soak up a lot of water and a lot of pavement and building down there really hurts the trees. So both these areas, Mariposa Grove and Merced slash to Almond Grove, were um, closed down for years as they refinished them. And they're, they're open now. Both those areas, um, uh, you got to park probably a mile, mile and a half from where the, where the actual trees are and hike down into the area where, where you can see the uh, sequoias. The rest of it is beautiful backcountry. Here's the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, which was a beautiful valley that uh, John Muir fought so hard to save and uh, lost. They dammed that up for to provide water to uh, San Francisco. This is kind of a picture of, uh, of the Hetch Hetchy Valley before the dam. So when you see pictures of Yosemite, you'll see it's Yosemite Valley, you'll see it's very similar, but probably a bigger valley and, and, and maybe more dramatic as far as the cliffs are concerned and the waterfalls are concerned. And uh, so all this is underwater now. And they're still fighting to get rid of the dam. They're still fighting to get rid of it. So here we are in uh, Yosemite National Park. Um, this area was formed uh, from cooled lava that made granite. And then with the uplift, when the, when the Pacific Plate kind of dived under the U.S. Uh, plate there, it uplifted into the Sierra Nevada Range. And finally, erosion uh, uh, exposed the, the buried granite, which is what we see here. This is El Capitan. There were glaciers throughout this area, and off and on, it says for three million years, there's some, some little bit of glacier left in this area. Been occupied, as far as we can tell, at least from 8,000 BC, maybe earlier. Um, in the 1830s, as settlers came west, they found the area, miners. Um, in 1864, Lincoln protected the area, but or he declared it protected, but there really wasn't enough enforcement there to do much. And it was given to the state of California. Later, it was protected by Congress and became a national park in 1906. John Muir came and served as a shepherd in that area. And um, he saw evidence of glacier scarring, although uh, most, most of the theories were that the valley had been uh, formed by earthquakes, which was wrong. Here's a picture of him with uh, Teddy Roosevelt. He brought Teddy Roosevelt out. They camped for, went on about a three day trip through the Yosemite. Uh, they, and that, that was the final straw to get it protected. So, these are some drawings that Muir made showing the scarring you could see on the sides of the cliffs. And uh, everywhere he looked, he, he realized that the, place, that the place had been formed by glaciers, which was against kind of the uh, theory at the time. But we could see that even today. Here's, a, here's a, a granite rock that got pushed down here about 25 miles from probably where it was. And it was in the middle of the Merced River. And we could still see a moraine today, which kind of measured the uh, extent of the glacier uh, back thousands of years ago. Uh, this is kind of a depiction of maybe what Yosemite Valley looked like 
when during the glacial period. And so all the all the tourist areas and stuff like that you see were under a huge glacier at that point. So let's take a look at uh, Yosemite itself. It's pretty easy to understand. Um, this is the Yosemite Valley with the Merced River running through it. Uh, some of the highlights there, there's a Half Dome, uh, uh, El Capitan. Um, you've got some different uh, uh, motels and lodges and camping areas through here. There's hikes all through here. Um, we did most of these hikes. We hiked up to uh, uh, Vernal Falls. Uh, we took a trip up to Glacier Point. I'll show you that. Um, I'm sorry, my wife and I did not climb at El Capitan. We did most of the hikes along the valley floor, uh, hiked over to Bridal Veil, Bridal Veil Falls, did all that in about three days. So it was pretty easy to do all that. Plus we drove up to, to Almond Meadows and I'll show you that as well. So let's look at Two Almond Meadows first, 8,600 feet. Uh, there's lodges and camping up there. This is where a few years earlier than our visit, I started my uh, hike on the John Muir Trail. We started from here. You can see it's quite pretty. There's an old lodge there uh, built by um, built by Edward Taylor Parsons, who was probably the, the, the first Sierra Club outings leader. And he led outings like this up there from uh, Two Island Meadows often and built this lodge. And the lodge is there today as a kind of a museum and, and it's got some displays in it. There are several really uh, nice day hikes there and longer hikes like we hiked from here back to Half Dome and then hopped on the John Muir Trail there and, and hiked on south. So there's a lot you can get, get on longer hikes here, just take some really nice day hikes. Beautiful area. Let's take a look at Half Dome. Um, you can see it from everywhere. This picture was from uh, Yosemite Valley floor, right out the, kind of the backyard of the lodge we stayed at. And uh, during sunset, these rocks just light up like gold. It's really pretty. We even had a little full moon there. It didn't come out very well, but we had a little full moon there. There's Hasp Dome from Glacier Point. I'll talk a little bit about Glacier Point in a minute. And driving up to Two Almond Meadows, we stopped at Olmsted Point and could look at Half Dome from the back. And a few years earlier, when I when I hiked the John Muir Trail, I climbed Half Dome, and here's me climbing up. So you, it's about a 45 degree angle. You just kind of lean back, stick your feet against the rock face, use these ropes to hold on to, and climb up to the top. It's about a quarter of a mile to climb up to the top of the thing, and. Um, the day after we climbed it, somebody slipped because the rocks were wet and fell and died. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty um, dangerous hike. You hike up this end, this dome side there. And a difficult place to get to. It's a hard hike from the valley floor even to get up there. Um, far side of the valley, Vernal Falls. That was a pretty easy hike. You can see here uh, we started out with just a few of our friends. I think we took a, there's a shuttle bus that runs through the valley. I think we took a shuttle bus up to a parking lot and hiked from there. So we had a bit of a group there, but it, it spread out. By the way, we, we went up there in August. So it was sort of the end of the season. The pretty, pretty hike up the trail. There's Vernal Falls. And you can get a little closer. So that was a beautiful hike. Didn't take long, maybe couple hours. We uh, took a, um, a tour bus from the valley up to Glacier Point. Um, you can hike up there, but it's a bit difficult. So it drives around and comes up this way. It's probably a much better way to get up there. This is uh, Glacier Point itself. Uh, Muir and Roosevelt uh, uh, camp there. It used to be they'd start a big bonfire up here and then dump the ashes over this rock. So from the valley, it looked like a huge uh, fire uh, waterfall coming down. 
Um, but um, with the fire hazards the way they are nowadays, they, they've stopped doing that. Do a half dome. Here's Yosemite Valley down here. This looks down into the valley. You can see some of the campgrounds and facilities down there. There's a better view. But um, that was a pretty that was a pretty trip up to Glacier Point. I'm glad we did that. We're thinking about hiking down. So you could you could drive up and hike down, but again, um, there's too much else to see. Um, Yosemite Falls was right outside of our window. We had kind of a motelish looking lodge that was right about here. Uh, but since it was August, there weren't any falls since um, since the um, uh, since the uh, melt had finished. You know, this is all just powered by snow melt. So I, I ripped off this pick from somebody else just to show you what it would look like had I been there in June rather than August. So we walked up to um, the lower falls, but we didn't see any sense in taking that hard trip up to the upper falls since there weren't any falls to look at. But that's, that's a pretty view. This is looking up at El Capitan from the valley. You can see it from everywhere. World famous for climbs. Most people now climb it without any ropes or anything, just free climb it. And uh, it takes a while for them to do that. And there's a few routes. There's a few names of routes that go up here that different people take. So there's probably like three kind of El Capitan trails you can take to climb to the top. Valley floor. You can see it's not quite as wide as what you saw in Hetch Hetchy. It's a much narrower valley. But again, all this was formed by glaciers. So those glaciers probably run into the tops of these, just about the tops of these peaks. So there's lots of hikes, you know, uh, either going down this way, going along the Merced, um, going around this way. So there's all kinds of hikes you can take in, during the valley. There's also a, a bus trip that just kind of takes you around towards the, some of the sites there in the valley. These are just some pictures from the hikes we took down there. I think we've looked at Half Dome quite a few times. And then we took a, a pretty easy hike up to Bridal Veil Falls. You can see it just kind of a wisp of water there. So that's why they call it the uh, Bridal Veil. But it was a really pretty hike, pretty easy, and um, some pretty falls. Um, there's John Muir and I at the uh, museum. Um, and uh, of course, he was instrumental in, in uh, in saving uh, the Yosemite National Park. And uh, he, um, for all the good he did, he also uh, was a bit racist when it comes to looking at uh, indigenous people and at the African Americans. Most of, most of what he said and wrote earlier, he sort of disavowed as he got older, uh, you know, uh, but um, we can't ignore the fact that uh, a lot of our historical uh, figures had a lot of good and a lot of a lot of bad with them. So we left Yosemite. We drove down uh, down to Sequoia, and let's see. That trip was about. About a five hour, no, about a, about a three, four hour drive, really pretty drive. So we drove down to um, Sequoia and Kings Canyon. So this is kind of an overview. We can talk a little, we'll talk a little bit more about the geography, but Sequoia is also an easy, easy um, park to navigate. Uh, there's only kind of one road that goes through there and we came in, since we're coming from the north, we came in here through Grant Grove and drove down to about here where we stayed. I'll, I got a better map, but, but anywhere along this road, uh, you see everything you need to see um, in the area. And there's also shuttle buses that drive around. 
So uh, the Grant Grove area uh, uh, is pretty, has a Grant, uh, uh, President Grant tree and the, um, and the giant stumps. We'll take a better look at that later. Down here's the giant forest area, the General Sherman, lots of other sequoias. And then there's some uh, indigenous personnel down here in Potwisha, some uh, remains of, uh, of their settlement down here, which we also went down and saw. So this area is formed much like Yosemite with the uplift. Vast sequoia forests existed over a lot of the, a lot of the earth uh, 180 million years ago, but there's not many spaces left. As I told you earlier, there's only three species that survived. These giant sequoias, the redwoods, and the sm small sequoia in China. And the giant sequoias are only in this area where we saw them in Yosemite and Sequoia National Park. Um, this area had been used by Native Americans seasonally. Um, and just like Yosemite, trappers, explorers arrived, um, loggers arrived, and uh, loggers and ranchers began their destruction then. Um, George W. Stewart, who was a newspaperman out in California, is really the, really the, uh, the father of the Sequoia National Park, fought like crazy to save it, and, um, and uh, Got a little help from John Muir, who had a lot more name recognition then, and um, was able to finally get this saved, and then finally get some rangers out there and the army out there to um, police the area and get the loggers out. So this is a pine cone from the sequoia. So it's not much of a not much of a pine cone that builds a tree with an average height of 165 to 280 feet. Uh, close to 30 foot width, 2,500 to 3,000 years old. Just gobbles up water like crazy, which is why they needed to get in there and remove, I'm sorry, remove all those uh, tourist, uh, uh, tourist buildings and pavement and stuff so that the trees could get the water they needed. The uh, wood's not very good for anything. It's kind of coarse, kind of splintery. Um, and uh, so I think the loggers found that there really wasn't much uh, really wasn't much of use, but that didn't help him from stop him from cutting a lot of them down. You can get an idea of these size. You, you really have no idea about the size until you go see them, but uh, you can get an idea about their size where I've got some humans uh, standing next to them. So this is the main main drive through uh, through Sequoia National Park right here. So we came in this way. And we stayed at this Wuxaki Lodge. And there's a visitor center right over here that has uh, uh, some snack, snack shops and, and uh, stuff like that. And then up here at, at, the, at the Grant area, there's, there's, um, uh, there's sequoia trees in the big stump area. And then uh, down here is the General Sherman tree and the big tree trail. There's a giant forest trail right here, which is really fantastic. I'll show you pictures of that. Crescent Meadow uh, that's over this way a little bit. I'll show you pictures there, beautiful hike there. We hiked up to Moreau, Walk, uh, Moreau Rock, nice view. Um, we visited Crystal Cave. We, we drove up to Crystal Cave one day and took a guided tour through that cave. That was a pretty, pretty drive and hike in, up to the cave and, and well worth it if you have time. And then here's Pop Wisha down here where the Indian, uh, where the uh, indigenous personnel were. So uh, from, this, from this lodge, it's easy to take shuttle buses or drive to a parking lot. Uh, uh, so it's really easy to get around and you know, not, not too hard. Um, up here is the big stump trail. Uh, about a third of all the existing sequoia trees were destroyed up in this area before they were able to stop it. Um, and uh, there's me standing by one of them. So you really get an idea of how many trees they cut down when you hike the trail through the big, big stump, big stump area. And then there's the, um, the, uh, the, the Grant Grove 
And uh, this is the General Grant tree, not the biggest sequoia in the world, but probably about the next biggest, but called the nation's Christmas tree. I guess, uh, I don't know whether they string lights on it or what at Christmas time. But there's a lot of other great, uh, great hikes around here, around here through some trees. I'll show you a little bit of it. There's one that fell down. You could walk through it. So that gives you an idea about the size. Um, there was a quote from a person, uh, I guess in the twenties or sometime that were, that was there when one of these sequoias fell and it just fell naturally. And he talked about how much water poured out of it. So these trees soak up all kinds of water. Then we went down, down here into the uh, center of the place in the, uh, where the General Sherman tree is. That's the largest tree in the world. Uh, 34 foot diameter, 270 feet high, 2200 years old. This area down here by the General Sherman had used to have gas stations and gift shops and all kinds of stuff. They took it all out. Got about 10 more minutes. The Big Trees Trail is right down there. And uh, it, it's just uh, the huge trees surrounding this open meadow area, which is critical to capturing water so they can soak it up. So this is a big circular trail. It's, I don't know, it's about, only about a half a mile. And then the big tree area is really a, uh, this is again where, where, where uh, buildings were, were taken out. They just left one little paved walkway through there. In the giant forest, you, you park above it, you maybe hike maybe a half a mile down to the trail of the giant forest, and you just go by one huge tree after another. The Senate, the house. And you know, this kind of trails you walk through, you just walk through all the all the sequoias. Quite beautiful. So this gives you kind of an idea. There's a couple of humans next to the tree. You can see what's what's going on there, how large these trees are. There's me at the president, huh? We also drove down further into the Crescent Meadow area. Uh, also, a really beautiful hike. Sequoias in here, some of them not quite as big as what we saw in some of the other areas. But um, and there's the tunnel log, I'll show you that, Tharks log and Moreau Rock are in this area. So uh, some nice things to see. And this was really a beautiful hike through here, just a couple miles. You always got to have a, a a tree hollowed out so people can drive through it. So that was a tree that fell naturally and they just cut a tunnel there for it. This was a uh, Tharp's log. This, this was a, um, a, a shepherd uh, back in the late 1800s. And uh, he just found a downed tree. It was hollowed out on the inside. He built a cabin there and a fireplace and lived inside the tree. We also hiked up to Moreau Rock. Nice view from up there. And you can see it's not that bad a hike to get up there. And a really pretty view when you get up to the top. A zillion caves in this area, as you can imagine, based on, on how it was formed. But um, Crystal Cave is open. Um, we had to park down the road quite a bit and then hike up to uh, hike up to the cave, but it was really pretty hike. And then we hiked for about a half a mile inside the cave. That's inside the cave. Um, our last stop was uh, the uh, Potwisha area uh, where Native Americans uh, lived. Um, these, uh, these depressions here were dug out where they would uh, squash acorn and other kind of nuts to make a flour. And then they would use that flour to bake cakes or use it 
use it in uh, soup and stuff like that. So these were all formed by uh, by Native Americans that were uh, crushing up crushing up nuts. They left some petroglyphs there that are protected. They're kind of under an overhang, so it's kind of easy to uh, uh, to protect them. And this is kind of what they look like. Nobody knows exactly what they mean. But they've seen similar designs throughout the Northwest. So that's that. Well, that was kind of a, a quick tour.